Hey, this is Davis for CCTV. This is the start of what we're going to call our Common Man series. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go cover a lot of different things. Some, basically, the idea is to get people in starting investing on $500 or less. That's the goal. Okay. So, in order to do that, we're going to discuss some key points. You know, the first one of which is money versus currency. Okay. In order for something to be considered money, it has to meet these standards. It has to be durable, portable, divisible, and interchangeable. Okay. Currency fails to meet one or more of these standards. Okay. Given the example of U.S. currency, modern U.S. currency, okay, um, it meets the standards of portable, divisible, and interchangeable. It does not meet the standard of durable. Is the average life expectancy of a U.S. bill in circulation is about six months. So it's not durable. Okay. When we started off with our currency, our currency actually used to be money. It was backed by something, gold or silver. So when we started off with that concept is, you know, we've all heard about gold and silver certificates. The reason being is they were certificates. So in order for that currency, give an example, $500. If I gave you $500 in silver certificates, you could take it to a bank and get $500 in silver. Okay. That current, that physical asset was on deposit. Okay. You, you couldn't just go and print whatever you wanted. There, there was an automatic check in there. It, it locked it in so that, you know, the government couldn't just sit there, hypothetically speaking. I'm the president of my own country, I look at my treasurer and I go, go make me a million dollars. He says, oh yes, boss. Okay. So, he, by doing that, there's nothing that ties it to, you know, there's nothing other than emotions that's tied to it. It's called a fiat currency. Okay. Whereas money actually has a consistent, durable value. Um, give the example of, you know, Roman coins, they're still around. Uh, we don't use them as money anymore, but they're still around. Okay. What we try to tell people to start off with is um, starting off investing is important, um, but it's important just as starting investing is important, starting off right investing is important. Um, you know, stocks and bonds are great ways to do it, but kids, particularly young people, don't understand the value there. It's a piece of paper. It's pretty paper, but it's still paper. Okay, cash is too easily spent. You know, you go out, you can blow 20 bucks with your buddies at McDonald's in an afternoon. It's not hard. Um, whereas the, you know, gold or silver, it's a val it's an asset that will always have value, which is a huge plus. So, you know, it's not like where, you know, you give somebody a stock and that company goes bust, they lose, every, you know, the stock's not, it's basically pretty wallpaper. Um, gold and silver always have a value. Um, since the, you know, since it's first started being used till, you know, even today, it's always got a value. Um, so that's a concept that a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, it, it is, it's tangible. Um which is kind of a cool thing to do with especially new investors because it locks it in. I, again, I'm going to use that phrase locks it in quite a bit. What I'm saying is a physical asset, psychologically speaking, if you can hold it in your hand, it's real. It's, you know, I, it's for real. Like I own this, this is mine. You can't take it from me. You know, it makes it substantially more concrete. In addition to that, especially with young young investors, it becomes a desire to you know, it becomes it gets a it has a cool factor to it, some cachet. Um, you know, everybody dreams of finding buried treasure. So you know, what is buried treasure? It's gold, silver, gems, stones. You know, it's all the cool stuff that we talked about. You know, Treasure Island when we were kids. So when you deal with new investors, it's important to feed a desire and a passion for it to make it tangible and realistic. Okay. When you do that, you're transitioning from a light asset, 
you know, like a like like cash, which you know, it, it's very fluid. It's you know, once it leaves my hand, it's not mine anymore. It's that same concept versus, you know, stocks and bonds, which you know they can do really well, they can do poorly. It all depends on any number of variety points. Okay, but gold and silver have locked in values, meaning they'll always be worth something. It may not be as much today as it was yesterday, or it may not be as much today or it is tomorrow, but there's always going to be a value there. So it's a great way to start kids off with investing because one, it's very, very safe. They, they don't lose money. And when I say they don't lose money, again, they're always gonna be worth something. It's never going to be worth nothing. So that's the big point of it. Um, they is a limited supply, which you might say that is, it's not like I can go out and just create more silver or more gold. Um, what's theirs will always be there. Um, it's economically sustainable. Um, countries don't do transactions in dollars. I mean, they use dollars as the value point, but Business negotiations between nations are done in gold. Okay. It's universally accepted. So if, you know, God, you know, heaven forbid, you know, the United States ceases to exist, you know, all we have is gold and silver, you know, our paper money is worthless. Well, the people who have gold and silver are going to eat the people who try to pay with paper or not. That's the facts because the paper isn't worth anything. So do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe, hit those like and subscribe buttons, hit that little bell for the notifications so you can get our latest updates. And I will see you next week. This is Dave Miller for CCTV.